Okay, so now I'm going to address the solo break that happens at the end of the head in. So the tune finishes and then the rhythm section suddenly cuts out for four bars and the first soloist improvises completely unaccompanied for four bars before the rhythm section comes back in at the top of the form. Now this can be a very disconcerting experience for an improviser to suddenly have the rug pulled out from underneath you, that kind of rhythmical cushion that the rhythm section provides. The sudden absence of that can be quite frightening. But your primary consideration is to stay in time, of course. Melodically, harmonically speaking, you're improvising around the kind of implied dominant of the tune. It's kind of A7, flat 9, resolving back to D minor. Um, but the notes themselves are kind of Im Im immaterial, certainly in this practice process that I'm about to introduce. Your primary consideration is to stay in time so that when the rhythm section does come back in, it's consistent with what you've been playing over those four bars. Now, people uh, ask me a lot about playing in time. And... Um, I can't stress enough the importance of practicing with a metronome. Don't always practice with the backing track because that will uh, help to cultivate a reliance on the full rhythm section. Okay, When you just have that bare pulse and you really learn how to internalise it and understanding, it uh, makes a huge difference in terms of developing your, your sense of time, I believe. So set your metronome to half the speed of the tune that you're working with. So Night in Tunisia, our version is uh, 180 BPM. So I'm going to set the metronome to 90 BPM. And I'm going to interpret the pulse on beats two and four because it's, we're working with a kind of swing groove in which those, um, those uh, beats of the bar are kind of paramount, really. So I'm going to internalise that pulse on two and four. And then I'm going to simply improvise around that four bar uh, break just using dominant language. But as I said, the notes themselves aren't really important for this process. The important thing is to stay in time with the metronome, try not to deviate from it, and try to really kind of internalise that pulse so that it becomes part of your consciousness before you move on to the next stage. So if I set my metronome to 90 BPM, and now I want to train myself to hear that pulse on beats two and four, my process for that is this. One, 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 two, one, two, eight, up. Okay. So I would just improvise around that four bar break using kind of vaguely dominant language but again trying to stay in time with the metronome and internalize that pulse on two and four that's the first process the next thing would be to turn to the backing track and then listen to that moment where the four bar break happens and try and keep the metronome going in your head or better still try and keep that kind of subdivision process going on in your head so that you know when the rhythm section is going to come back in. So keep the pulse going, keep that little ticker in your head going throughout the four bars, and then try and clap at the moment that you believe the rhythm section is going to come back in at the top of the form. Not as easy a process as it sounds, as you're perhaps about to find out. So more or less, I was kind of a split second out. But perhaps if I was to practice more with the metronome and work harder at really, really ingraining that 180 BPM in my in my consciousness, um, I'd be even more accurate with the uh, with the clap there. Um, so that's the process of really working on your on your timing. Use the metronome, practice with it. Try not to deviate deviate away from that pulse in any way, and that will help you a lot in terms of your timing. And rhythm section players will appreciate it. Believe me, they really, really do notice when an improviser, a frontline player, has a good sense of time and they will comment on it. And no doubt they will comment on an improviser who doesn't have a good sense of time, perhaps behind that person's back.
No, I'm sure they wouldn't. Jazz musicians are lovely people, of course. Um, but yes, certainly good to have a very accurate sense of time and will serve you very, very, very well in all kind of jazz performance contexts. <laughs>